Amen. Amen. How, how many come looking for something from yes. Jesus tonight? Yes. Amen. The Bible says sometimes uh, that we have not because we ask not. God is here tonight to meet any need. Amen. He's here to heal whatever, we, whatever needs to be done tonight. Amen. God is in our midst. Amen. Let's give Jesus a great big hand. Let's bring him into our midst tonight. Amen. food upon my table yes. lit a shelter over me today today he's provided everything that I need well I don't have to worry when I close my eyes to sleep you see he never gets too busy he gets a watch it over me well he, he knows how he knows how to take good care of me no matter where the storm may lead a walking in Jesus is aware my God already knows the need. He knows how. He knows how to take good care of me. Well, walking by faith and not by sight, sometimes hard to do. Well, just how long will I carry this burden before the feeling of the love comes in?
He's a mighty good oh, God yes. tonight. Hallelujah. How many he took care of you today? Amen. Hallelujah. Been a good God to us tonight. Amen. Yes. Would you raise your hands this, this night towards heaven and let's ask the blessings of the Lord upon this service tonight. Ask him to minister to every heart and every life. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you know the needs and you know the situations tonight. God, you know every heart, Lord. God, you know what we have need of tonight. Even before we ask, we come tonight. I just want to thank you. God, you've been so good to us. God, you've met every need. You've supplied everything for us tonight. You've been there, God. You've been there. I thank you for it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hands and love him tonight. Hallelujah. Just welcome him in our midst. Thank you for all of his goodness and all of his mercy. Have Amen. you ever tried to be something? Hallelujah. That's your thought. Have you ever chased after someone, oh, yes. leaving God in the dust? Oh, Do you God. know who the Savior yes, is? He will save you from your sea of and heal your broken knees. Lord, I want to be holy. so dry inside that nothing seems to help have you ever tried to do your best but always seem to fail do you know who the Savior is he will breathe deep inside of you so that you can
Have you ever tried to be something that you're not? Have you ever chased after someone leaving God in the dust? Do you know who the Savior is? Yes, God, this altar's open tonight. He will save you from your sea of so dry inside that nothing seems to help. Have you ever tried to do your best but always seem to fail? Do you know who the Savior is? He will breathe deep inside of you so that you can seated tonight. God bless you. Amen. We welcome you to the Solid Rock tonight. Believe in God for great and mighty things. Amen. For the goodness of the Lord tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Sheila, come and sing tonight. She sings tonight. Amen. We're going to receive tonight's offering. Ask, amen. Ask you to give and let the Lord bless you tonight. Amen. Minister, to, amen. To the needs. Amen. How many knows he's a mighty good God tonight? Amen. This will go to the church. Minister to the needs. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Sister Sheila another good hand. Amen. Brother Chris, testify. Amen. That's true. That's true. Amen. How many of those he did? Amen. Amen.
He's a good God tonight. Amen. Brother Buddy, say something for the Lord tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because he's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. Amen. Sister Doris, come and sing tonight. Give her the Lord a good hand. Amen. Y'all still remember me, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say one thing for a sing, though. I, uh, you know, we fly when we go off on our trips on these cruises, and I, I don't mind flying, but I don't like flying. But anyway, because, you know, I like my feet on the ground where I can control stuff. And 
you know, so when I'm up there flying, I'm thinking, you know, you know, this could be the last time that I'm here, you know, if I've done everything right. And, you know, and this song Robin sings about um, um, when I die, let me die, speaking in tongues. And in that song, it says, uh, uh, I left my kids a road map yeah. to meet me in the by and by. And I, I'm sitting there on this plane, I'm thinking, like, did I, have I left them a road map? Have I? left them a road map. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, it just, you know, it kind of just got to me there for a minute. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm responsible. I, yeah, I have a pastor in church and I bring him here to be taught, but he gave me those kids. And have I left them a road map? Have I explained things out? And have I lived the life true? I can live it true, but sometimes you got to say it. Sometimes you got to tell them, even if they want to hear it. You still got to do it. You know. So anyway, Love God, good to be back. Charlie was a man about 69. He went to my church back in the Georgia Pine. He lost his wife and his children were gone. But every Sunday night he does a special song. The preacher does the people and it's empty. tonight. Amen. Sister Minnie, say something for the Lord tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Now, sir.
Yes. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Yes, it is. All in his control. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet one more time tonight. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Amen. And brother, we, we talk about that flight. Amen. Won't have to worry about no crashes in that one. Amen. He's going to take us home. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I still feel that shadow of a king in here tonight. Hallelujah. He's still the Alpha and the Omega tonight. He's still the beginning and the end. Come on, let's give him one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us a mighty good God tonight? Hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbor, what's like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and listened to me and glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. For glory to God, he set me free. of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground and glory to God I'm homeward bound. Set me free, yes, he set me free and he broke the bonds of prison for me. Well, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see for glory to God he set me free. Set you free tonight. Yes. How many of y'all are set free tonight by the power of God? You don't have the guilt and the weight of sin upon you tonight. Somebody will shout hallelujah. You don't have the guilt of sin on you Come on. tonight yes. by the power of God. Well, I'm telling you, there's a good God in here tonight. He wants to touch your life tonight. Amen. I just feel like somebody going to walk out of here lighter than when yeah. you came in. In the name of the Lord. Sister Jane, I want to pray for you before we change this service tonight. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Give God another shout of praise tonight. Amen. Not of this world shall turn me around. Well, daily I'm working and I'm praying to get glory to God. I'm going through. Will he set me free? Will he set me free? And he broke the Will I'm glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God? He set me free. Well, goodbye to sin and 
Touched your body right there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Amen. Amen. Say something for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. Brother Don, say something for the Lord. He will. Amen. Yet to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Will he set me free one more time? He set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see for glory to God. He said. Michael Dahl, a good hand tonight, amen. He comes to break the bread of life for us. Come on, let's give him a good praise, amen. Turn around and tell your neighbor, I've been set free tonight. Hallelujah, by the power of God. God, I feel that lifted in here in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. I'm he's excited to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. I, I appreciate my salvation. I appreciate everything that the Lord has meant to me and has done for me. You know, uh, not, I'm not perfect in any way, but Jesus is. And I want to tell you, when I was an enemy with the Lord, he loved me. And when I was doing things to destroy myself, he would save me. And I want to tell you what he done. He took ownership. Brother Keith, you know, as a shepherd, he went out and left the 99, as Brother Chris said, and he went and he found me. Because he gave. He owns me, you know. You know, and I was just thinking, when you take ownership of something and you take possession of that, then you, you protect it a whole lot different. And I want to tell you, Jesus is in control tonight. And I want to tell you, he's took ownership of us. And you know what? Our destiny are, is in his hands. Our victories are in his hands. And I want to tell you, it's up to him. And I want to tell you where he's at tonight. And I say this quite a bit, but he's still high and lifted up. He's still on the throne of heaven. And I want to tell you something. His glory is still filling the, the temple. And I tell you what, there's still angels in his presence crying, holy, holy, holy. I want to be like Sister Minnie said. I want to say holy, holy, holy before Jesus tonight. Because one thing about it, it's all about Jesus tonight. I love him tonight. I worship him. And I'm certainly glad that he came my way and pulled me up out of that pit, that place I was in. And I was just thinking, you can be seated just for a moment, and we'll get into the Word here in just a minute. But I was just thinking, uh, Brother Keith, as I was coming up here, you know, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, we, we want to blame things. You know, when things don't go a certain way, we want to blame somebody. We want to. Sometimes people get in a shape where they want to blame God. But you know what? It's not about you. When you you got to be careful when you want to blame somebody because you you're not taking responsibility in any in that situation. When you take that blame and you place it on somebody and you say, "Well, this person made me angry," 
or this person done this, this person hurt me, or this person did that, and you start placing blame and excuses on, on your behavior is what you really do. And you got to be real careful if you start blaming God because there will be a time that you'll blame God and you'll justify your actions. And you know what you'll do? You'll walk away from God, blaming him the whole time instead of taking responsibility for your own actions. I want to tell you, there was uh, the Bible says in Matthew 25 that there was five wise virgins, and there were five foolish virgins. There came a time that their lamps needed to be filled and trimmed and all that stuff, and there was five that was prepared, and there was five that was uh, foolish and was unprepared. And I want to tell you the ones, I want to tell you whose fault it was that they were unprepared. It was theirs. They took no responsibility in ensuring that they could make it through a delay. And I want to tell you something. You know what? A church should rank at the top of your priority list. I'll tell you what, you know, we neglect sometimes the things that are the most important. And what happened is those virgins decided that they were going to neglect their lamps. And they were going to neglect their responsibilities. And I want to tell you, sometimes we want to blame other people when we got neglect in our lives. But you know what? I want to take my responsibility and I want to do good. I want to I want to be a goodly person. I want to I want to be, you know, I want to raise my hands before the Lord and I want to be know that I'm forgiven and that the Lord loves me and and, and, and you know, I'm a child of the king that's what it's about tonight and I tell you I love him tonight but I was just thinking I had several people <laughs> brother Keith asked me if I was going to minister tonight and I told him I don't I don't know <laughs> and uh and uh, I say that with uh, uh I say that with respect and humbleness because if you'd have wanted to if you'd have wanted to preach and you'd have got wound up I'd have supported you all the way because I love you and I wanted to tell you that so let's give our pastor a hand clap tonight hallelujah Hallelujah. And you know, I was thinking about leadership, Pastor Keith, and I know you know this, but there's no congregation or no group of people or anybody, businesses or whatever, that can achieve or ascend higher than their leadership. You know that? Your leadership sets the limit on how high you can go. And I want to tell you something. Don't you thank God that we got good leaders? We got leaders who's got a heart. We got leaders who's got vision. We got leaders that's got purpose, and we, you know what? We got leaders that want to want to see the lost saved, and want to see homes put together, want to see children blessed. Want to? We have youth services. We got all kinds of things going on. I mean, he's glad that we got leaders that's got a vision. I got got a heart to, and a purpose to help people. I tell you, uh, you know, just to repair that stuff that's broken, and just to mean, you know. And I was thinking about the youth service, and and I'm going to get into the word. But uh, my the last youth service, my youngest son being uh, the, the 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 Holy Ghost moved upon him, and and I tell you what, the Lord blessed him. And I wished he was here tonight, but he he is sick with the flu, I guess, and uh, he's at home in the bed. But the Lord moved on him right over there, and I was thinking about it because. You know, sometimes you get discouraged, and sometimes I look at those boys of mine, and I think, golly, what's wrong with them, you know? And uh, and I was just thinking to how the Lord would move on me at times as a young man. And I just thought, you never know what that done for being over there the other night, because you know what? There'll be a day he might, he might get into a situation, he'll think, God is my help. God is my refuge. There's a place I can go to get a little uh, relief from this. There's mercy at the altar. How many knows what I'm talking about? So I was just thinking about being being ministered to and and how thankful I am to be a part of a church that 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 things like that can happen. That's the leadership I'm talking about. That's the heart and the purpose. And I want to tell you one more time. Let's give our pastor a hand clap one more time. Hallelujah. If Sister Jen, hallelujah. If Sister Jean was in here, we'd do the same. But I, I tell you what, I love my pastors. And you know, uh, Brother Keith, I, I, before I get into the word, I want to say I love my wife. She supports me. Uh, she, Without her, I couldn't do what I do. And uh, I'm not going to go into all that, but she takes care of a lot of things that I don't have to worry about. And she makes it, me able, to, it frees me up to do things that I, can, that I can be successful in a lot of ways. And without her, I wouldn't be the man you see today. So let's give Leanne a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I love my wife tonight. And uh, and the rest of my family is here. You know, I was just, and I'm going to get into the word, I promise. But I was just thinking, Sissy, about uh, growing up. And Sissy, uh, my Aunt Sissy back there, she, uh, 
I've seen, um, she's loved me, she's taught me, and she's also spanked me. So, <laughs> so uh, when I look back on those memories, I reflect on those memories with a smile. And I cherish some of those times, okay? So I got a good family. Glad that they're here tonight. And just glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Are you excited tonight? Hallelujah. I tell you what, it's all about Jesus tonight. And I tell you, I want to preach to you just a few minutes if the Lord will allow me. You know, uh, uh, you know I, I, I talk to people sometimes and, you know, they, 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 they get into these conversations and, 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 and you know, people... People are looking for, you know, they're looking for a reason or they're looking for a purpose uh, that something's going on in their life. And, and I hear them say, they, they talk about the will of the Lord. And I begin to wonder, what exactly do we mean when we talk about the will of the, the Lord, you know? And most people don't consider that any negative things would be in the will of the Lord. Most people, you know, uh, uh, they don't consider that there might be battles and there might be setbacks. Most, most people don't ever consider when they head down that road, you know, most people react to the situation and most people are not prepared to deal with the situation. And I was just thinking, you know, uh, you, you can use several examples. I know there's a little funny commercial on TV where the doctor's in there and he's talking to the patient. And he says, are you nervous? And the, and the patient says, yes. And the doctor says, me too. And you know what? He, he don't sound like he's very prepared to do surgery. And I was just thinking, you know, if I ever had to have surgery, and, and thank God I've never had surgery in my life, but anyway, if I ever had to have surgery, I'd want the doctor coming in feeling fresh. I'd want him coming in feeling revived. And I want him coming in prepared to do surgery, right? I wouldn't want him coming in, you know, uh, half hung over or having a headache or having a lot of other issues in his life. I'd want him to come in prepared to deal with whatever problem I had to deal with. Well, that's the way we are. God wants to prepare you for the things that are ahead. You know what? There was a time that God told Noah, hey, it's going to rain. And Noah went out and he preached to everybody, hey, it's going to rain. He didn't preach that message just, just for people to hear it. He preached that message for, to prepare people for what was coming. I want to tell you, there was a storm coming, and there was a rain cloud coming, and there was a lot of people that didn't heed the message, and they wasn't very prepared to deal with what was headed their way. But I want to tell you, God wants to prepare you tonight and I want to tell you you know you might not you may be in the will of God and there might be t things in your life uh, uh, battles and setbacks you may not be the top dog you may you know what you know why David was such a good shepherd brother Keith you know why and I know you know but David was a good shepherd because he knew how to be a good sheep the Bible says and they, you want to know how I know that David was a sheep it's because he said in Psalms 23 the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want and you know what? David went on and he passed that to his sheep. And he went on and he took care of his sheep. And he would he took ownership of those sheep. And when the bear would come in and the lion would come in, David said, no, that don't belong to you. He said, no, that don't belong to you. And David took ownership of his flock. And, he had, and you know what? He was in possession of his flock. And you know what happened to those lambs? And you know what happened to those lambs? Uh, a sheep was in David's control, and David was in control of that situation. Not the lion, not the bear, and definitely not Goliath in that situation. But I want to tell you who was in control. It was David. And you know what? I don't know where you're at tonight, but you have a shepherd tonight. And he is in control. And I want to tell you, he wants to comfort you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. But you've got to realize that there might be battles. And there might be setbacks. And there may be times that we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But I want to tell you one thing. I can promise you this. You don't have to walk through it all alone. He said that I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you all the way. And I want to tell you, sometimes people don't realize that when they talk about the will of the Lord. When they imagine the will of the Lord, no one signs up for servitude. Nobody signs up. They sign up for big things. They sign up for this or they sign up for that, but they don't sign up for servitude. They don't sign up for to be willing to help out. Instead, you know what they sign up for? They, 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 they're looking for something they're looking for something big, and they're looking for something uh, that's going to re, uh, reward them in the instant. The pro and I want you to go with me to the book of Romans tonight. We'll go to uh, chapter 12 tonight as we get into the word. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's a great God and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 
If you'll stand with me for the reading of the word, we'll read the word. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I'll be at 12, Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I want to tell you, you're not going to do that with an everyday thought process. you got to have a different thought process. you got to have a renewed mind. Because when you face these situations, you've got to have a, you know what, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can be a successful leader. You know, God called people to follow. You know that? Not everybody can be a Moses. Not everybody can be a David. And not everybody can be a pastor. But you know what? You know what you can do, though. You can uh, you can humble yourself, and you can and you can have that renewed mind, and you can offer, and you can be that, that sacrifice. And he said, "For I say unto you." Now we're talking about the will of the Lord, and Paul goes on here in the next verses, and he begins to talk about the will of the Lord. And I want to tell you this: this will of the Lord will apply to everybody in here, and me too. And he said, "For I say unto you, the grace given unto me, that every man is among you, not to think of himself more." highly than he ought, but to think soberly according as God has dealt with every man the measure of faith, for as many members, for we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So these lone wolves is not the will of God. You can't sit at home all by yourself because you're mad at somebody at church or because you're mad at the preacher and be in the will of God. Now, Paul said that, not me, but anyway, for as many as uh, having many members in one body, we all have the same office. So we being many are as one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts according to the grace that is given us, whether it's prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on ministering that he teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Him that ruleth with, uh, with diligence. He that showeth mercy, do it with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Or whore that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another and with brotherly love. And honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Hallelujah, not softful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Hallelujah, I want to tell you, we neglect our, our relationship with God sometimes. And we'll, I'll talk about that maybe a little bit in a minute. But di distributing the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. If you're running around cursing, you're not in the will of God. Hallelujah. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not the high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Hallelujah. Recompense no man for evil for evil. Okay. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you live, with, live peaceably with all men, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give a place to venge, for wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if, you, if your enemy hungers, you feed him. If, you, if he thirsts, you give him something to drink. For in so doing, ye, you, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Are you excited tonight? Hallelujah. I'm going to preach to you just a few minutes tonight. If the Lord allow, you can be seated. But concerning the will of the Lord, nobody signs up for servitude, Brother Keith. Nobody signs up to be patient. Nobody signs up to be a, a, a giver and cheerful giver of mercy. Nobody, nobody signs up to endure persecution without complaint. 
Nobody signs up to endure or, or, or to bless and, 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 and when people are cursing you. Nobody, nobody signs that up with no retaliation. Instead, everybody is looking for the next big thing. Nobody much today has a desire to overcome evil. No chance of people being willing to sacrifice for somebody else. There's not much chance of that. But I want to tell you something. If you've got a transformed mind and you've got a preparation for what's coming to you, you know what you can do? You can be holy inside of the biggest storm. You can be prepared for the biggest storm. You can be well armored to endure the biggest storm. But I want to tell you there was a time uh, and, and that they, uh, Paul and the, and the passenger on the ship, they incur, uh, encountered this storm and it was called an Heraclodon. And this storm was blowing every which way. And there come a time that the men lost complete control of that ship. And they lost all hope and they cast all these things off to the side that it took to stir the ship and it took to man the ship. They cast it all to the side and the Bible says they let it drive. I want to tell you something. It was out of their control and that was a storm that they wasn't prepared to deal with. Their ship wasn't stout enough to, to survive the storm. The ship was going to be destroyed. The ship was going to go down. But I want to tell you, there was a man that was prepared. There was a man that knew how to get a hold of God on that ship. And I want to tell you something. We got a place that we can go and we can fellowship with God. And there's an altar here. And I want to tell you about the importance of a Wednesday night service is the fact you might be facing a storm on a Thursday morning that you're going to need God to move in. And you're going to need God. To you're going to need God because if you don't come to church on a Wednesday night, you may not be prepared to deal with Thursday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, I was thinking, you know, in, in today's society, you know, and I, uh, I have to be careful I don't get caught up in these same traps. But when I was growing up, we didn't have phones in the house. And I had to work all summer long to pay off my bicycle. I, bought it, I, I trimmed this neighbor man's yard and bushes all summer long every week for his son's hand-me-down bicycle, okay? And his son had got a new one for Christmas or for his birthday, and they were going to give me that one, and I had to earn that bicycle. And a lot of the other kids in the neighborhood would be playing, and, 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 the, and the gentleman would walk out on the front porch, and he would whistle. And I knew what that whistle meant, and it cost me work all summer long. But, uh, but you know what I did? I took care of my bicycle. I, I owned my bicycle. It was a Team Murray 1000. And, I, and I'll never forget my bicycle. And as a young man, I was into video games, Pastor Keith. And I would work and I would mow lawns and I would save my money and I would go buy my video games. See, Daddy didn't buy us much except on Christmas or maybe a birthday. And, we, and I would buy my own stuff. You see what I'm saying? And I would have to save up. And I would have to anticipate that to come. But you know what? In the day and age of credit cards and internets, there's not much preparation. It's all about instant gratification. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I could pick or choose how I wanted to spend my money. And you know what? Before I walked into Walmart and I handed them 60 bucks in 1990 for a Mario game, I had to think about it. You see what I'm saying? Because I had worked and the sweat, I had earned my money. You see what I'm saying? But you know what kids do today? They got credit cards and they got all this instant gratification. And, and I'm not knocking anything, but there was this guy that was giving a speech on a, a successful life at Harvard. And he, and he began to he went to a class reunion, and he began to look at people, and you could mark their lives. Certain guys are real smart, college educated, or the best schools of education, and they had failed at certain areas in their life, and some of them have took on massive amounts of debt, and some of them had lost marriages due to instant gratification, and you know what they done? He, he began to measure them, and even though they were smart men, they wasn't, de they wasn't prepared to deal with the things that was going to come their way. You know what? There's a trap. There's a, when they give you a credit card in the mail, there's a trap attached to it. And you know what they're doing? They're trying. They know that you that you're going to be tempted by the instant gratification. But there's a, a interest line on there, and there's there, there's a payday on there. See what I'm saying? And you're going to get a bill in the mail, and you're probably going to end up paying five times the original price of that item if you don't pay it off in a timely fashion. You know what that is? That's a trap. 
And, I, and, and I'm not knocking anybody who's ever had credit card debt. I've dealt with some of it myself. But I want to tell you, there, there, there's instant gratification. And ain't nobody wanting to be patient. He said in here, he said, he said, let us be patient. Let me find out that verse one more time. Hallelujah. He said be impatient. And I don't know which verse it is. I've, I've lost my place. But uh, let me look down through here and find it just real quick. But uh, showing mercy with cheerfulness, that's verse 8. And he said uh, not slothful in business and, and rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, verse 12. Nobody is really wanting to be patient. Nobody wants to be, nobody wants to do any well doing. You don't have to worry about people getting weary in well doing because nobody is signing up to do the well doing in today's culture. So, what I wanted to talk to you about what is the will of God? Well, the will of God is to, do, is to have your mind transformed and to have your mind focused on the things of God, even in the battle. And one of the best examples I could think of that, Pastor, and you preached about some of it the other night, and that's Joseph in the book. Of Genesis, and I want to talk to you about Joseph for a little while, if I can. If the, you know, and I'll tell you what, let's just give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah! We're here because of Him. I'm talking to you about giving cheerful mercy. I'm talking about enduring persecution. I'm talking about being patient in tribulation. Those things are the will of God. And I want to tell you, oh Joseph, he was having dreams at one time, and he was his father's favorite kid. And you know what? His father took time and he taught him certain things. And old Joseph began to be hated by his brethren. And he had dreams. And he would tell his brethren about his dreams. And the Bible says it made them hate him even more. And the Bible says and on down there that they got to the place where they envied their brother. They, 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 they hated their brother. And it got so bad that one day his father sent him out. And his brother was in Dothan, I think. And, and, and Joseph is headed down there, and they see Joseph coming a long way off. And they decide, they start conspiring among themselves to kill Joseph. And they decided that they hated him so much that they wanted to get rid of Joseph. Now, I want you to think about something. Joseph was a 17-year-old kid. Now, I got boys. I got Noah. Getting ready to turn 18 here in a few days. And I've got Ben that's 14 years old. And I remember what I was like when I was 17. And those boys are nowhere near prepared to deal with what Joseph dealt with. So I want to tell you, he's a 17-year-old boy that got up out of bed one day with a coat of many colors. He got up out of bed one day, his father's favorite. I mean, he was he was ruling the roost there at the house. You can say it ever how you want, but he but he was pretty much in control. Yeah, he was spoiled, and what he wanted, he got. And his father favored him, and his father uh, 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 spoiled him and just just done things that made the other brethren jealous, made them envy him. And you know what? He got up that day in that state, but he didn't go back home that night. I want to tell you what happened to Joseph that day. That day, Joseph left home in a good state, but that night, he laid his head down as a slave. I want to tell you something. He, he lost his coat, and his coat was stripped away from him. And you know what happened to Joseph? He was sold into slavery. And yet there was a, he, he left there a free man. He got up out of bed, and he went to check on his brother, a free man. And that night, when he laid his head on the pillow, he was a slave. And I want to tell you, he belonged to those Ishmaelites. And at that time, you know what they could have done with him? They could have killed him just like a dog. They could have done anything they wanted to him because they purchased him. And he was a slave, and he would have meant no more to them than any other animal or any other stock. Now, his father loved him, and his father cherished him, and his father spoiled him. And he woke up, and he got out of bed that condition. But when he, went, when he, went, when he laid his head down that night, he was in a totally different condition. But now I want to tell you, there, there come tribulation come Joseph's way. 
I want to tell you, he got up in the will of God. He, he was enjoying those dreams. Everybody wants those dreams where I'm going to be on top, and everybody's going to bow to me. Everybody wants to sign up for that. But nobody wants to sign up for the tribulation. Nobody wants to sign up for the pain. But I want to tell you, there's a will of God, and I want to tell you, I want to be in the will of God. And I want to, I want to encourage you tonight. You may be in the storm. You may be in the prison. You may be in those places. But you know what? That doesn't change God. And the Bible says that old Joseph got down there and Potiphar purchased him. And Potiphar made him a slave in his own house. And, he, and you know what? And the, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. And I want to tell you something. I'd rather be a slave in the house of an Egyptian and know that Jesus was with me than to be a king of any nation in this world, to be the president of the United States. I'd rather be a slave and know that Jesus was on my side because I've got to have Lord. I've got, I've got a motive. You see what I'm saying? I want to get to heaven. My motive is I want to lay these eyes on Jesus one day. I want to see him. You know what? I want to see the nail-scarred hands. I want to see that face. I want to know him. I want to behold him. I want to love him because you know what? He loved me first. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he so loved the world, or he so loved me that he gave his only son. And I want to tell you, if you're in a relationship, you should always want to give a little more than you take. And I want to tell you something Jesus gave. He gave it all on Calvary. And I want to tell you something. You can't outgive him. You can't outlove him. You can't outserve him. There's nothing you can do to, to top what he done on Calvary. And you know what he done? Not only that did he even make a testament, but he said, I'll enforce it. I, 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 will, I will enforce that testament. I, you know what? When there was nobody to swear by any higher, he swore by himself. And he said, I'll take care of you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You're more than a conqueror. You know what you are? It may be in a prison, but you're just a prince. You may be that prince in that prison, but y'all want to tell you, hang on. Nobody sound no, no you got to be patient. You got to be cheerful when you show mercy. You got to be able to endure persecution. Hallelujah, without retaliation. Now the Bible says, let me find my scripture here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me find my scripture. Hallelujah. He's a great God. The Bible says he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Potiphar in chapter 39 left all that he had to Joseph. The Bible says, let me find the scripture I want to bring up. Hallelujah. Now you think, hallelujah, that Joseph was just at the beginning. I mean, he was. you think that all these things had happened to him, but he was just at the beginning. I don't think when Joseph was sold into slavery that he knowed that he had 13 years. Now he's a 17-year-old kid, and he's a slave. And the Bible says that he was brought down to Egyptian, to Egypt, and the Potiphar, in the office of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, Egyptian, bought him off the hands of the Ishmaelites and brought him hither. And the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper. And Joseph found a grace in his sight. He served him, and he made him an overseer of his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass that at that time that he had made him overseer of all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptians for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon he had and in the field. And he left all he had into Joseph's hands, and he knew not what he had. Now this is where I wanted to get to. He didn't even know what he had other than the bread he ate when he sat down for a meal. Now listen to this. And Joseph was a goodly person. Now that is the will of God. The Egyptian, the slavery, and all that he lost did not change his character or his integrity. Now that is the will of God. That's what I signed up to be. I signed up to be a Christian. You see, I don't have a plan B. Come hell or high water, I want to see Jesus. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what comes my way. I want to see the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. And Joseph said this. He said, I'm going to do. And you know what? If we'd have got sold into slavery, especially as a young man, if I'd have got sold into slavery, I'd have thought, you know what? It'd be easy to blame God. 
I could do a lot of things, especially with all the trust I got with Potiphar. I could steal a little bit. I could put a little, you know what, I ain't getting out of here. I don't have no idea what's happening next. Ain't very many people want to be a goodly person when they find themselves in that situation. I'm preaching to you tonight. Hallelujah. And he said this. He said, and the Bible says that he, he was a goodly person. And you would think that that would be a trial right there. You'd think that old Joseph is starting to win a little bit because he's been promoted as a slave. But you know what happens? His wife, Potiphar's wife, comes to Joseph and she begins to seduce him. Now, I want to tell you, as a 17-year-old boy, he didn't have no dates lined up for Friday night. He didn't have a social life. You see what I'm saying? He didn't have no comfort. He didn't have no little girl to hold his hand. He didn't have no little girl to tell you, hey, handsome. You know what he had? He had a dungeon wall or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Joseph left everything behind, not by choice. He was, bought, he was, he was captured by his brethren, and he was sold into slavery. And you know what happened then? Potiphar's wife falsely accuses him of rape. And I want to tell you something. Old Joseph, for a long time, he had a chance to head that off. He had a chance to partake in that sin. He had a chance to to be seduced by the devil. He had a chance. But I want to tell you something. Joseph was a better man than that at 17 years old. Joseph wasn't making excuses. You see what I'm saying? You know what a lot of Christians would do in today's age? They ain't waiting 13 years to, 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 to have a relationship. You know what a lot of Christians would do in today's age? They would take that man's wife and they'd say, well, that must be the will of the Lord. I'm stuck down here in Egypt and the Lord allowed this to happen. That must be the will of the Lord. That's what a lot of Christians would say. But I want to tell you something. That, that Potiphar's wife did not belong to Joseph. She belonged to Potiphar. And old Joseph had enough conviction to know that that didn't belong to him. And he even told her, he said, you don't belong to me. And he said, I can't sin against God. But in today's society, with all the instant gratification and all the things that we want, nobody wants to sign up. You see what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be patient and let God send them the right mate. Nobody wants to be patient and let God work things out. Instead, they want to sin and they want to take on things that don't belong to them. And then they want to turn around and say, well, it must be the will of the Lord. I want to tell you something. That ain't the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Joseph Joseph was a goodly man, 17 years old, a lot stronger than some people my age. Hallelujah. Anyway, people generally react to battles and setbacks. People, you know what? Joseph, in the middle of all that right there, suffered another setback. But he was on his way, Brother Keith. That's what I'm telling you. You may be in a bad shape tonight, but you can be on your way. God can be right there with you. People generally react to battles and setbacks in a negative fashion. They rarely prepare to deal with an issue. But old Joseph never flinched. He said, you don't belong to me. And you know what? Uh, the, 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 the lady accused him of rape, and they cast him into a prison. So Joseph goes from bad to worse. And you know what? The whole time was he in the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, did you sign up for the will of the Lord? I want to tell you, I cast my lots. And you know what? I headed out with a chosen few, and Jesus is my Savior. I was thinking about the song, and I've been listening to it quite a bit, and I can't sing, but he says that in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. And there's another place where he says about friends and family forsaking me. And he said, but I trust you, Lord. I find my peace in Jesus' name. He says in another place that the test didn't come back too good. And I ain't got long to live. And I can barely take a breath. And you know what? I've lost my baby to addiction and all these things. And my only hope is to trust in you. And I want to tell you something. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. You're my God. And I'll tell you what, I won't waver. You can take everything I got, but I won't waver. You know what? I came to church when I didn't have very much. And now that God has blessed me, I want to serve him. I want to love him. I want to honor him. I want to know him. Because you know what? I, anybody can know him on the, on, on, the, on the throne. Anybody can sit on the throne with a ring on their finger. And they say, can say God is good. But when you're in the dungeon... 
And when it looks hopeless, all my hope is in you. That's the God I want to know. I'm sold out tonight. Are you sold out? I signed up and I won't turn back. I took a hold of the plow and I want to go a little farther. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The Bible says, 39.6, that Joseph was a goodly person. I want to be a goodly person. Let all hell assail. Let the thunder clouds roll. But you know what? God is on my side. He said he would never leave me. He said he would never forsake me. You think Satan don't lie to me? Sure he does. But I want to tell you, I know and who I know. And his name is Jesus. He said he said he would be right there with me. He would hold my hand. And in a predicament, without a time limit, I want to know him. I don't have to know. I just got to know that Jesus is with me. In a situation, in a situation, being being uh, uh, removed from his father, being being removed from his father's favorite and being turned into a slave, all I need to know is that Jesus is with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And old Joseph began to work in the prison. And he worked his way up. And you know the story well. And one day, old Pharaoh has some dreams. And Pharaoh don't know how to. He can't get no rest. He can't get no peace. And finally, somebody tells him about Joseph down there in the prison. And Joseph, it's been a long time. It's been about 13 years. And they shave Joseph. And they clean him up. And they walk him out of that prison for one reason and one reason only. And he was a goodly person. He took responsibility for his actions even though he was in the midst of a major battle. He took responsibility for his actions. He took ownership of his situation. He took the hand that was dealt him. And he turned it into a winning hand through Jesus. That's the kind of God we serve, Pastor Keith. Hallelujah. And old Joseph comes before Pharaoh. And he, and he interprets Pharaoh's dreams, as you know. And fa- there's going to be seven years of famine after seven years of good. It's going to be a rough time coming, and they got to prepare for it. That's, that's what I'm talking God wants you to be prepared. I promise you there's a famine coming one day. God wants you prepared. You know what he did? He, he prepared old Joseph. You know, Joseph could lead the nation of Egypt because he knew how to follow Potiphar. You say what you want, but you can't be a good leader if you're not a good follower. I tell you what, I can't be a good leader. You know, old, old David didn't try to institute his vision. He didn't try to undermine Saul. And you know what? When he had a chance to kill Saul, he didn't do it. And I want to tell you something. I'm of no value to this church and I'm of no value to this pastor if I can't support his vision. Hallelujah. And if I can't be loyal, then I won't have people be loyal to me when it's my turn to lead. You see what I'm saying? You know what? In, in the job I'm in today, and I, don't, I, I, had a, I had my boss ask me one day. He said, when a lot of people were talking things, how come you never did? And I told him, I said, that's not Bible. And I told him about the story of David and how the men said that God has surely delivered Saul into your hand. And I said, I don't, I said, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to blow your light out. I'm not looking to take you down, but I'm looking to support you. And you know what that man did? He embraced me. He, he, he blessed me. And he trusts me now. That's what I'm talking about. I want to tell you something. You can't be, oh, Joseph. Oh, Joseph was going to be, he was, he had been trained. He knew how to be a good follower. He knew how to bless his masters. He knew how to be an asset to Potiphar and to the prison guard. You know what? Most people don't want to be an asset. They don't want to give more than they take. They, in every relationship, they try to get the upper hand. They try to take a little more than they give. That ain't the will of God, folks. Read Romans chapter 12 like I read it to you. That ain't the will of God. And Joseph is our example. And he sat there and he told Pharaoh all about his dreams. And he began to interpret his dreams. And you know what happened? Pharaoh said, I'm going to put you on the throne. And I'm going to make you the king or the number two in charge, the governor, I think the Bible puts it. And he put a ring on his finger. And he said, now this guy came straight out of the prison. Now, you got to remember, he left his father's house one day 
and he, and, he, and he laid his head on the pillow, a slave. But there was a day he got up as a prisoner, and he laid his head down in the palace. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen in here? Do you see what I'm saying to you? One day he got up as a prisoner. He was nasty, and he smelt bad. But he, when he laid in that bed, he was clean, and he was refreshed, and he had a good bath, and he had a good meal. And all these things, you know what old Joseph did? He was in the will of God. I, I, I want to tell you, and there come a time that his brethren got hungry. There come a time, now the Bible says it was two years into the famine. So at this time, Joseph would be somewhere around the age of 39, Pastor. He would have had seven good years, and he would have had two bad years. And his brethren come in there and showed up. The men who had sold Joseph out as a slavery, they showed up. And you know what? The only reason they didn't kill him is because old Judah said, why would we kill him and not make any money? We could sell him and get a few dollars out of him. And, you know, and if we kill him, we ain't getting nothing. That's what, that's what Judah said. And uh, he said, so why, why kill him and conceal his blood? Let's sell him. And, you, you know, and, and so as, as the story goes, in 37 and 4, Joseph spoke peacefully to his brothers. You see what I'm saying? Is they didn't speak peacefully to him when he showed up that day. The last time he'd seen his brothers, they were very, very envious. And they were very, very rude. But, oh, Joseph, being the king or the governor of Egypt, he spoke peacefully to those guys. It says in 37 and 4, and then another one, it says in 37 and 11, it says Joseph did not envy his brothers. You know, you see what I'm saying? And with, or 37 and 11, his brothers envied him, but he did not envy his brothers when they come before him. They, you know what? Joseph had been in the wrong direction for a promotion, but it wasn't over for him. He had a lot to give. The Bible says in 45 and 5, uh, Genesis 45 and 5, if you'll go there with me, I want to read it to you just exactly the way it says it. Because, you know, this man had been through a battle. This man had spent 13 years or more in that battle. And this man had every excuse in the world to be bitter. He had every excuse in the world, if you want to find one, to be resentful, to not be a Christian, to not love the Lord. He had all the reason in the world to take revenge on his brothers. But you know what he said in 45, verse number 5. He said, now he's talking to his brothers. Well, let's go back to verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brother, come near me, I pray ye. And they came near, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold in Egypt. Think about that. Joseph hadn't forgot. But he said, now therefore, don't be grieved. He said, don't worry about it. And don't be angry with yourself. Now, they were angry with him. Think about it. And, the, and But you know what? I read you the will of the Lord in Romans where he said, don't repay evil with evil. And I read it to you in the book of Romans where he told you what the will of the Lord would be. And you know what? Oh, Joseph, when his brothers came in there, he said, don't be angry with yourselves. You sold me hither, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there's five more years. And I'm going to take care of you. You meant to kill me. You meant to get rid of me. But I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to feed you. And I'm going to nourish you. Now, you see what? You can't have a regular, everyday mindset. You can't have a regular, everyday approach and, and have what Joseph had sitting on the throne. Can, you, can I get a amen tonight? Hallelujah. And verse, or chapter 50, verse 20, and y'all can stand to your feet. We're going to get ready and close. But in chapter 50, verse 20, the Bible says, But as for you, you meant it evil. You meant to do me evil against me, but God meant it good. And he brought it to pass, as it is in this day, to save much people alive. Now, I've done my best to tell you about the will of the Lord tonight. I've done my best to preach to you about being a goodly person. And Joseph has given us an example of how you can overcome evil with good. Now, I want to tell you something. Everybody in here has got the and Everybody in here wants to know what the will of the Lord is for their life. Now, I can't tell you if you're going to be rich. I can't tell you if you're going to be 
a prince like Joseph or the head of a big corporation. I can't tell you what your life holds, but Jesus can. And I want to tell you something. If you're ever going to get anywhere, you're going to have to learn to operate yes, within sir. the will of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't yes. want to get there by stomping people or stepping over people. I don't want to get there by blowing people's life. I look for the good in people. Yes, sir. Sometimes, you know, there's people that we got to let go, Pastor Keith, and, yes. and my line of business. Sometimes we got to let them go. And I'll challenge them just about every time when I'm a part of the decision. I say, are you sure? Is there any assets in that person? Is there any way that we can put them to doing something else? Is there any way? You know that? Because I want to look at those people. I want to see the good in people. I don't want to see the bad. I don't want to see the, you know what? And, you know, I, I love prayer chains. And I think prayer chains, I would love, you know what, to, and, and call. But you know what? In a lot of churches, in a lot of circles, a lot of cliques, prayer chains is coming nothing more than gossip. And I tell you what, I don't need anybody running me down. I don't need anybody running my family down, but I do need your prayers. I, I do covet yes. your prayers, and I want you. To, I want you to pray. Reach your hands towards heaven. I want to tell you, you if you're here tonight, yes, God wants to touch you. Hallelujah. Thank you, you know, I've seen God minister early in the service, but you know what? The Spirit of the Lord is here. He's here to mend the brokenhearted. He's here to set the captive free. You, you know what He said? He said, "Cast your cares on Me, because I care for you." That's what the Lord said. So if you're here tonight and you're heavy burden, Jesus, he wants to give you direction. He wants to give you guidance tonight. Hallelujah. Just reach out to the Lord. Straight ahead there is How many feels that way tonight? One more time. This great man of God in the message, a great big hand tonight. Hallelujah. Now, see, some folk want to serve God just for good times, but he preaches just like it is tonight. There are some good times, there are some tough times. If you don't allow the tough times to make you, you'll never be what God wants you to be. But how many glad tonight you've been made it through the tough times? Amen. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. I ask you to right now, just get your hand before we dismiss tonight. And amen. Uh, be in revival tomorrow night in Barberville at Brother Jimmy Lee's in the Eagle Revival. Be preaching there tomorrow night. And just ask God to really touch that service. Minister to the needs tomorrow night, Friday night, and they'll be there Saturday night also. But amen. Ask God to really minister to that revival. Ask him to touch the hearts and the lives in that service. Come on, let's just pray tonight. Father, thank you. God, for that service tomorrow night. God, thank you what you did here tonight, Lord. And God, that you will move in a mighty way. God, that the powers of hell, every demonic force of hell will be defeated.